we read, what is the first petition? Hallowed be your name. That is, grant us first of all that we may rightly know you and sanctify, glorify, and praise you in all your works in which shine forth your almighty power, wisdom, goodness, righteousness, mercy, and truth. Grant us also that we may so direct our whole life, our thoughts, words, and actions, that your name is not blasphemed because of us, but always honored and praised. Beloved congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ, when the Lord Jesus teaches us to pray, then the very first item that he instructs us to mention is hallowed be your name. In other words, that is our first need for body and soul. Because think of what we confess in a previous Lord's Day, question and answer 118. This is what we confess. What has God commanded us to ask of him? And the answer is, all the things we need for body and soul, as included in the prayer which Christ our Lord himself taught us. So our very first need is involved when we pray, hallowed be your name. When we so listen to the teaching of our Lord, we can ask ourselves, do we in our prayers to God consider this petition just as important as the Lord Jesus said it was? How often don't we in our prayers just plunge into the requests and needs we have as we cry out to God? That's what we consider to be our first needs. And yet, Christ teaches that our first need is to pray, hallowed be your name, our very first need. For as we hope to see this afternoon, this is a basic prayer, and it flows forth from our identity as children of God. In other words, it's a logical progression from the address, our Father in heaven. This petition, hallowed be your name, is very closely related to how God is addressed in our prayer. Because this petition, hallowed be your name, concerns our relationship to God our Father, our relationship as his children. And as children, we are to know and see the greatness of our God and see again the implications of our being his children. And this is what is involved because, and that is our theme for this afternoon, when we pray, hallowed be your name, we pray first of all for the purging of our lives, and secondly we pray for the praising of his name. Hallowed be your name. If we are to understand correctly, we must realize that this is a request, a petition. It is not a declaration of a fact. It's not a doxology or a praise, as we find later on when Christ teaches us to say, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. No, the words, hallowed be your name, is a request, a supplication. The first request we must bring to God in prayer, hallowed be your name. But what does it mean? To hallow God's name does not mean to somehow make God's name holier. That's impossible. His name is holy. We cannot change that or improve on that. An illustration may help us to make clear what is meant. In Psalm 72, verse 17, the name of the Messianic king is compared to the sun. It may therefore be helpful to think of the name of the Lord as the sun, glorious and splendid. 
Now, we cannot change the fact that the sun is glorious and gives off light. However, although the sun keeps shining, and we cannot stop that, yet the glory and splendor of the sun can be blocked by clouds, fog, and mist. Now, in an analogous way, we can block and hide the glory and the holiness of the name of our God. How? With our sin and disobedience. And it is this that must not happen. That is what this petition is about. For if we hinder or try to block the radiance of the name of the Lord, then we do the name of our God enormous injustice. Then we do not recognize its holiness and glory, and we do not give him the praise which he deserves. And that would be terrible. For who are we? We are children of God the Father. That means we are to be holy as he is holy. After all, God has taken hold of us and set us apart, separate as his children. As children who have a father who is holy and whose holiness, glory, and name must therefore fill our lives. The name of our God must be as the sun shining in our life. In short, his glory and the beauty of his name must be evident in our existence. It must radiate from it. Hallowing God's name means that we recognize God's position, that we recognize his claim of separateness and holiness over us. It means acknowledging that he is the only one who must dominate our lives. He's the only one who must give our life sparkle and luster and fill us. It means to look to him alone for light and direction. In this way, we give glory to him and praise him in all his works. That is the kernel and heart of the prayer, hallowed be your name. But now, if all this is true, then this petition is quite demanding. For although we are children of Father above, we do not automatically claim God, acclaim God as our Heavenly Father. And we do not automatically give him the place of honor that he deserves. And that's a terrible thing, and yet it's a reality, for we all stumble. Although we are children of the Heavenly Father, we do not naturally give him the honor of being our everything in our life. We do not naturally let the sunshine of his glorious name radiate from our lives and fill our existence totally and completely. But God who is holy, and who has claimed us to be holy, he wants to be everything in our life. He will not settle for anything less. He does not want to be like a sun on a cloudy day. He likes to be the sun on a clear sky in our life, so that his splendor and his glory shine forth unhindered from our lives, so that he dominates and is everything for us in all that we do. Then his position as God, the Holy Father, comes out, and justice is done to him and to his name. And therefore the Lord Jesus teaches us to pray, hallowed be your name, that is, grant that we rightly know you and praise and glorify you. Grant that you be everything in our life. Grant that our life be full of you, as the life of our young children are full of and dominated positively by father and mother. I think we'll all agree quite readily that our lives are very full. There's hardly time for anything in our modern, fast-moving world. But what are our lives full of? Is it not so that very easily our life can become filled with things which do not really promote the glory of God's name in our life? Is the danger not there 
that our lives can so easily be filled with things that act like clouds and block the hallowed position of Father who is in heaven so that he does not shine forth from our lives. Is it not so that very easily many clouds and patches of fog from this life can block the holy radiance of the name of our God and his claims in our life? As though still inclined to sin, do we not easily clutter up our lives with all sorts of things which take away from that predominant position of the holy name of our God? and its glory and comfort. Well, if we recognize that we are by nature predisposed to sin and easily color up our life with things that detract from the holy claims of God, then we realize that this is quite a prayer. Because if hallowed be your name means that our life is to be full of God and his name so that we praise and magnify him so that his radiance fills our life, then it's quite possible that much needs to be cleaned up in our life from time to time so that our habits and our wants can be sorted out and so that God can indeed be seen, be hallowed and praised in all our life. And therefore, when we pray this prayer seriously, we are in effect beseeching God that his name and his claims of holiness enter and fill our existence. But before we pray that prayer, we should know what we are praying for. Because when God answers this prayer, this prayer unleashes great power. The power and the glory of the holiness of God. For when we pray, fill our lives, O God, so that your name be everything and shine forth from our life, so that your name penetrates every nook and cranny of our life, then we're really praying that the name of our God, yes, that God himself will clean up our lives so that every cloud and mist that hides and obscures his glory will evaporate. It means he will enter our lives in the power of his holiness so that every sin and habit that detracts from his name that he has attached to our lives, so that every sin and habit will be scorched away by his divine power. For when God answers this prayer, he will purge our lives and purge us so that we know again what holiness entails, what total dedication and service to God is all about. In short, what being children of God means, so that we will again know the glory of our God and the glory of his holiness. Praying hallowed be your name means purge us so that we can indeed be recognized as your children who have a holy father and as children who are holy like him. And so we see that this prayer, hallowed be your name, It's not a request that God's name somehow be holier, but it means that we be purged and made holy so that his holiness is seen in us and recognized by others. And therefore, it is a prayer for purging, a prayer with a cost, a prayer that God burn out of our lives all the clutter and garbage and sin which could force God into the background of our existence. For if God be hallowed, if his name is to be hallowed, he and his name must be in the foreground of our lives. He must be all in all, and the radiance and glory of his name must shine forth from our existence. Purging is not a very mellow experience. When metal, like gold, is purged, then it's heated to a very high temperature. 
If there are impurities, they can then be separated. In a similar way, our God can put on the heat in our lives. He can make us go through trials. He can make it difficult in family and personal circumstances or even in the congregation as a whole. Why? Well, God wants to show us the worth of our faith as we read in 1 Peter 1. Or to put it differently, he wants to show us what it means to be a child of God by faith and to have a Father who is in heaven, the Holy One, and to have him in our life. He wants to show us how great his holiness is. And when testing comes, when the heat is on, then a lot of the clutter of life disappears. Then the important issues come into a sharp focus. If we go through a crisis, then many, many things that before seemed indispensable suddenly look worthless and unimportant. For then we see the real issues of living and dying. And we see again the beauty of the holiness of our God. If God tests us with trials, then we see that he has called us above all to be holy and he has made us holy and he wants to fill our life so that we can be separate and holy in his care now and for eternity. When God purges our life, scorches and burns away much, much will disappear, but not the Lord. He stays because he answers the prayer. Hallowed be your name. Grant that I may know you, that you be everything in my life, that I may praise you. Yes, when we go through trials, we know our God again. Then he is everything to us. And even though there be misery, we rejoice that some of the clutter is gone. And we see again how rich we really are in Christ. For it is true, difficult times can be very rich times. Ask anyone who's been very sick and gone through much heartache and trial. Then we say with the apostle Peter in 1 Peter 1 verse 3, Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, even though as exiles there be trials and difficulties, as Peter's readers were, yet blessed be his name. Or to use another example, if the Lord so purge our lives, we can with Job, after Job lost everything, do as he did. I quote, he fell on the ground and worshiped. And he said, may the name of the Lord be praised. For Job saw how rich he really was. That ultimately is enough. All this incidentally shows that there's an aspect of blessing in the fact that Christ said that in the last age, and we are living in the last age, that in the last age there will be many difficulties and trials. It will become more and more difficult for the children of God that has been prophesied by our Savior. It is already the case in many parts of the world where the persecution is vicious and unrelenting. In such trials, God helps his people in answering this petition and provides our first need and answers our prayer. For then we seek him all the more and he fills our life with himself so that we remember our identity as those set apart, holy exiles, children of God, so that we remember the name of our God and let it shine and radiate from our lives. Hallowed be your name. That is, as the Catechism puts it, grant that I rightly know you. It also means that if the Lord purges our lives from time to time, we count it an answer to prayer, a blessing. For after such trials, we know the Lord again in a way we didn't know him before. The Lord, the God of holiness, is the God of grace, and he does these trials in love for us. As sinful human beings, 
we so easily clutter up our lives with unimportant things and with sin, and so do injustice to the name God has attached to our lives. And then we push God unwittingly into a corner behind the clouds of our own concerns so that God cannot be everything in our lives. That's how we are by nature. So what does God do? He commands us to pray, hallowed be your name, your very first need. And when he answers that prayer, he comes and shows his glory and how rich we are in him. And to do that, he can purge our life of all that is unimportant and fill our life with himself so that we recognize again what it means to be his children. Yes, her only children. He is the Father. He is God. And he has called us from sin and bondage of grace to be holy and to show his holiness. And when God visits us in difficult circumstances in answer to this prayer, then we experience something of the greatness of our God. And then we have more knowledge and understanding of who he really is. And then the name of God is not just something we read about in the Bible, but then we really do know the Lord and experience his presence. Then he becomes more real, for we have seen his hand of discipline and correction. Then we have heard his living voice as we turn for consolation to his word. And then we know him again without superficiality because God has taken us by the hand through difficulties and shown us something of his glory. And then we're excited about the greatness of our God. And as a child boasts of his parents, so we can boast of our God and his name. Yes, when we know the Lord, then we can praise his name. And this takes us to our second point. This prayer means praying for the praising of his name. As the Catechism puts it, that we may sanctify, glorify, and praise you in all your works, in which shine forth your almighty power, wisdom, goodness, righteousness, mercy, and truth. What are those works of God? Well, in the context of our scripture reading, one can certainly include the purging and the discipline of our God to clear up our lives of sinful clutter so that God may fill us with his spirit and the comfort of his word. What powerful praise of faith and triumph have not sounded forth to God from the mouths of those who have been plunged into deepest despair. We may be brought low by the Lord, but then the God shows his greatness as the God of our life and lifts us up to his light and glory. Trials bring out the best of God's work. They show that God has done his work well in calling us to be his and making us his own possession. How is that? Well, when children of God, when we experience trouble, we don't disown God. We don't walk away from him. But we cling to him, and we go to him, and we let him fill our lives. This going to him is the doing of God. It's not our doing. And we praise him for that, and we thank him that he does not let go of us. And then we also thank and praise his name for the work of salvation in Jesus Christ that makes this prayer possible. And we thank him that we, don't, we do not have to undergo eternal punishment, but that God's anger for our sin was endured by Jesus Christ. We thank him that of eternity he called us to be holy, to attest to his name in this life, we praise him for his work of Pentecost, that we too may have the Spirit and be born anew by the Spirit, raised to a new life and to a living hope as children of God. We thank him that he will fill our lives if we pray, hallowed be your name. Yes, as children of Father in heaven, we praise him for his works, and they are so many. 
We can thank him also for his work of this hour, of giving us an opportunity to worship corporately. We thank him for filling our lives with his gospel and providing all our needs. We also praise him for being in control of the whole world, for having the ultimate say over the events that are taking place globe-wide, where the powers of evil often seem to have the last say. With the media reporting conflicts and wars in different parts of the world, it is so good to know that our Heavenly Father is the King of Kings and that He rules through His Son. He has ultimate control. Our lives can so easily be full of ourselves. And if God is to have a place in it, that place can be very small. Yet any negligence on our part cannot diminish in any way the greatness and the holiness and power of the name of our God. Though our society may pretend that God is either irrelevant or doesn't exist, yet he is God and he is holy. He rules, and he who renews and purges our life will one day renew and purge planet Earth, the entire world. The Holy One rules, and he will judge this world, and we praise him for that, for that means he's in control, and we as church, as people of God, can exercise our office and calling. In that respect, we read in 1 Peter 2, verse 9, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As chosen people of God, we are called to this task as children of Father above. As children of God, we cannot and must not forget our Heavenly Father and all that he has done and still does for us. As children, we cannot remain without emotion and fervor when speaking of the joy of our redemption, when defending the good and holy name of our God every day again. We can do that as children, and we must, for the living God of glory has taken hold of us, filled our lives with his spirit. He has come to us in saving grace in Christ, must we therefore not speak of him and rejoice in him? God has set us apart as holy so that his name can be hallowed through us. If his name is not honored and hallowed through us, his children, if the light of his glory does not radiate from us, who else on earth will do it? After all, we are his children, his image, who are to be readable letters of the fact that we are of the family of God. If a letter is legible, it will be read and understood. If we take our identity as children of God seriously and live as his image, the image of our heavenly Father, we will be seen and noticed as such because the glory of his name will radiate from our lives. So the question is, does something of the sunshine of the glory of his name emanate from our lives? Are we like that? Does something of the joy of knowing Christ, knowing the name above all names, radiate from our existence? Or will people be surprised to hear that we're Christian? Put differently, is the word of 1 Peter 3, verse 15 relevant for us? Do people notice the hope and joy we have? Think of these words where the Apostle Peter writes about our attitude. He says, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Is this word applicable to us? Or could it be that our life can be so cluttered up with the agenda of the spirits of this age that although we have the outward religion and go to church and things like that, yet others hardly notice God and his name of holiness in our life? 
This issue is a very serious one. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome, in Romans 2, verse 24, and he wrote that God's name was being blasphemed among the Gentiles because of their behavior. That can happen. That God's name is blasphemed because of the lifestyle or behavior of Christians. When Christians have a sinful lifestyle that does not reflect the image of Father in heaven, then horrible injustice is done to the name of God. And his name is actually blasphemed, Scripture says. Whenever that is the case, that is horrible because it brings dishonor to the name of our God, whose children we are. After all, Christ has expressly taught us in the Lord's Prayer that God's name must be our very first concern. Hallowed be your name. This first petition is our first necessity. For if others cannot sense our holiness because of God's name is not present in our life, then we actually hide something of the holiness and power of our great Father in heaven, creator and redeemer. Now, if others cannot see something of God's holiness and name in our lives, then our identity as children of God is on the line. For children are, by definition, image of Father. And so Scripture confronts us with the question, are we image of God? And do we show His holiness or not? Is the light and glory of His name evident in our life, radiate from our life? Well, about the answer to that question, there need not be any doubt. If we do what Christ taught us to do and take this first and necessary petition most seriously, we need to pray with conviction, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. That is also our first need. Yes, grant that I may know you, O God, and praise you as your child, so that others can see and give glory to you. Hear this prayer, O my God, for I am but a child, weak and insecure of myself. Hear this prayer, it is so necessary. For Father in heaven, I do belong to you as your child. As a poet once put it, may we, your children here below, in all our deeds, your image show. Amen. Let us sing in response hymn 